know, I was hired to come to the School of Education as the AV jock. Our responsibility was to be sure that the, the carts and the overhead projectors got delivered to the right rooms. I remember coming up to you and saying, is there anything else that, that uh, we might be able to do? In particular, could we build a, uh, a computer lab? My job was to go to other deans of the schools and convince them because we all realized that even though the president and vice president and all got on board and we got the money, it would go nowhere unless we had the faculty behind us. The first questions we ask is, what are you trying to accomplish in your class? What are your pain points? And we really spent a lot of time with no technology other than a drawing pad and a, and a pen. So let me tell you a little bit about this space and where it came from. We are standing in what used to be two-story high gymnasium for the uh, middle school that used to be here. The curves on the stain and the carpet, colors of the carpet, was all inspired by the markings on the gym floor from the basketball court. When I got there, I just really didn't think twice about the fact that it's a creative space and it needs to have the kind of atmosphere that creative people like to have. We had consultants, we had, you know, pedagogy experts, we had uh, places where faculty could come and, and, uh, and build things for the, their students. Uh, we had places for students to access these things and build things for themselves. I remember being able to get a video camera and being able to do audio recording just whenever I wanted to. We even had the recording booths that we were able to set up. All kinds of analog formats fed into here. But it was very expensive, avid video editing workstations then. You see now it's basically an iMac running Final Cut Pro and DVD Studio Pro and a very different game now. You can do this stuff on your laptop, but it took a very expensive appliance back in the day. I think what the New Media Center brought was these, uh, at the time, very kind of rare and expensive tools uh, that frankly were kind of clunky and, uh, you know, they, they allowed us to kind of model the future of, of what might be. Uh, I think one of the great examples of that is the, is the VIDS network. These sets of racks held a whole bunch of laser disc players, TV RF modulators to feed different TV channels, an audio video switcher, and a Mac that controlled all of this. In the software, we could tune to different channels on this little cable TV network in the classroom. RF cables, all those went out and fed a series of workstations in the other room. And this video disc would be on channel three, and this video disc would be on channel seven, and this video disc would be on channel 13 and the software would be able to say, I need to know, I need the video on channel 13, and we would present that. So that's how we were able to deliver this incredible full motion, full color, full screen video experience to the user's desktop. Uh, I think it really helped with the teaching because they could see really what was going on. We had all of these faculty who had requirement, requirements for their courses that were fulfilled in the NMC by using the equipment and the capability there. And in so doing, we immediately exposed students to a whole new capacity that they had never really had their hands on. I know we had some green screen video where a character would come out and start pointing at things and we'd have to interact with them. We'd never done anything like that before. I just can't believe it now, what we were able to do with those video discs that allowed the students to, to navigate their way through concepts of chemistry. You're wanting to see these reactions and color changes and things that were happening in, the, in a tiny little video. It was just not present. The years that I was there uh, were really inspirations of faculty and how they saw opportunities to change the academic outcomes using technology. This was one of the first rooms where students actually turned to the side so they had a clean shot, eye contact with the instructor. And it was much easier for the instructor to cruise around the classroom and see a lot of different screens, see who needed help, see who was doing okay. Regardless how big the university is, these kinds of resources had to be open to everybody. Engineers and musicians and artists all kind of coming into one space and then so you're not in these little silos anymore and you got to work with everybody. That was really, really cool. Over time a student group entity uh, formed and uh, that was really exciting because uh, you know, at that point, things are starting to happen that are beyond your control. This was one of the things that the central administration liked to point to as being something driven from the grassroots rather than them putting it in. Right. And they were quite proud of that space that we put in up on that, up in the School of Education.